everybody, welcome to ITTV. For today's lesson, we will be studying on oxidation and reduction. So for today's lesson on chapter 3, we will be looking at the definitions of oxidation and reduction in terms of loss or gain of oxygen, loss or gain of hydrogen, loss or gain of electrons, and increase or decrease in oxidation number of elements. And we will look at specific examples to increase your understanding on the definition of oxidation and reduction reactions. So for the first slide, let us look at the first definition which is in terms of gaining of oxygen during reaction. Magnesium burns in oxygen with a dazzling white flame. A white ash is left behind. The reaction is magnesium reacts with oxygen to produce magnesium oxide. The magnesium has gained oxygen and it has been oxidized. Oxidation has taken place. So what happens is that magnesium has gained oxygen and therefore we would say that magnesium has undergone oxidation. The white ash that is left behind is none other than magnesium oxide powder. And let's look at a video on the burning of magnesium in oxygen. Now, for reduction, it is also defined as losing oxygen during reactions. Hydrogen is passed over heated copper 2 oxide. The black compound turns pink. This reaction is taking place whereby copper 2 oxide reacts with hydrogen gas to produce solid copper as well as water. And the setup of the apparatus is shown. This time, the heated substance is losing oxygen. It is being reduced. When a substance loses oxygen, it has been reduced. Reduction has taken place. Now, for the first parameter to define oxidation and reduction, as I mentioned earlier, is either in terms of gaining or losing oxygen. For this second specific example, copper 2 oxide has lost oxygen and therefore we would say that copper oxide has undergone reduction because it has released, it has lost oxygen to produce solid copper which is slightly pinkish in colour. The black compound was copper 2 oxide. Let's move on to the next part. When hydrogen reacts with heated copper 2 oxide, the reaction that takes place is as mentioned earlier. Copper 2 oxide has been reduced to copper by reaction with hydrogen. So hydrogen acts as a reducing agent. Now, usually, if copper 2 oxide has been reduced to copper, it means that copper 2 oxide is acting as an oxidizing agent while hydrogen is acting as a reducing agent because it has been oxidized into water. So the point to remember would be, let me go to the board to illustrate this. The point that you all need to remember would be, oxidizing agents are reduced. They will always undergo reduction, whereas reducing agents, they will become oxidized. And this process happens simultaneously at the same time. Oxidizing agents will be reduced, and reducing agents will be oxidized. So in this case, copper 2 oxide is reduced, therefore it's acting as an oxidizing agent. Now, oxidation reduction takes place together. Look at the reaction above. Oxidation and reduction always takes place together. Like for the first example, magnesium is being oxidized which means the oxygen is being reduced. So which is 
the reducing agent in dyscasia. Remember, the reducing agent will be oxidized. And in this case here, magnesium is being oxidized. Therefore, magnesium is the reducing agent. Is that clear? Now, hydrogen gains oxygen to form water for the second example, whereby copper 2 oxide was reacted with hydrogen gas. So, hydrogen gains oxygen to form water, copper 2 oxide is reduced, hydrogen is oxidized. As mentioned earlier, oxidation and reduction always takes place together. If one substance is reduced, the other is oxidized. So in this case here, if hydrogen is oxidized, means that hydrogen is the reducing agent because reducing agent is oxidized. Now let's look at some more specific examples. In terms of gain or loss of oxygen to define the definition of oxidation and reduction, let's look at the reaction between zinc and copper oxide, whereby this produces zinc oxide and copper. So what is the substance being oxidized here? In this case here, the substance oxidized would be zinc, would be zinc, because zinc has gained oxygen. The substance reduced here would be copper 2 oxide because copper 2 oxide has lost oxygen. Now, then which is the oxidizing agent? Remember, the oxidizing agent is the substance that is reduced. Always remember, oxidizing agent is the substance that is reduced. The substance reduced in this equation would be copper 2 oxide. And the reason that we know copper 2 oxide is the oxidizing agent is because it has been reduced. Because oxidizing agents are reduced. Now for the reducing agent, remember the reducing agent will be the substance that is oxidized. And in this case, the substance that is oxidized would be zinc. So how do we know that zinc is the reducing agent? Apart from the fact that zinc has been reduced, we could say that zinc has gained oxygen. Because when it gained oxygen, it is actually being reduced. So this is a specific example to define oxidation and reduction in terms of gain or loss of oxygen. Next up, Let's look at another example whereby we can define oxidation reduction in terms of gain or loss of hydrogen. So look at the equation whereby gaseous hydrogen sulfide reacts with chlorine gas to produce sulfur and hydrogen chloride. So which is the substance which is oxidized in this case? Now remember the new parameter is either gain or loss of hydrogen. So the substance which is oxidized in this case is none other than hydrogen sulfide. How do we know that hydrogen sulfide is a substance oxidized? This is because hydrogen sulfide has lost hydrogen. It has lost hydrogen, so it means that it is oxidized. Let's look at the substance that is being reduced. Well, the substance reduced will be chlorine gas. How do we know that? Because chlorine gas has gained hydrogen. If it has gained hydrogen, that means chlorine has been reduced. Next up, we look at which is the oxidizing agent. Remember, the oxidizing agent will be the substance being reduced. So which substance is being reduced here would be chlorine. And how do we know that? Because chlorine has gained hydrogen. Apart from the fact that chlorine has been reduced, chlorine here has gained hydrogen. Lastly, which is the reducing agent? Remember, reducing agent is a substance that is oxidized. And in this case here, the substance oxidized would be hydrogen sulfide. Reason being because hydrogen sulfide is 
oxidized. As you can see, hydrogen sulfide has been oxidized or it has lost hydrogen. If it is oxidized, it would lose hydrogen. Next up, let us look at the third parameter to define oxidation and reduction processes in terms of gain or loss of electrons. Example, we have sodium reacting with chlorine to produce sodium chloride salt, which is a substance that is being oxidized. It is none other than sodium. How do we know? Because sodium has lost the electrons. Now, to have a better understanding of this, I think it's better if we look to the board to have a deeper understanding of how um, gaining losing electrons would define oxidation and reduction. So I'll draw a line. Okay. Now, first up, let's look at the reaction between sodium and chlorine to produce sodium chloride. Right? And we have to balance the equation. So, the substance being oxidized here should be sodium. This has been oxidized. It has undergone oxidation. How do we know that? Is that in order for sodium to become sodium plus over here, it would have to sodium would have to lose an electron. So in other words, sodium has lost one electron, has lost an electron. So if it has lost an electron, we would say that sodium has been oxidized. simple as that because when a compound or an element has lost electrons we would say the compound or element has been oxidized because sodium has lost an electron so we would say sodium has been oxidized oppositely okay to compare if we look at chlorine okay I'll use a different color now Chlorine to become chloride ions. This will be chloride ions here. So it's balanced. Okay, one mole of chlorine has to gain two electrons to produce two chloride ions. So in this case here, you can see that chlorine has gained. two electrons. So chlorine has gained two electrons. And with that, we say that chlorine has been reduced. So that's a simple um, differentiation. If chlorine has accepted gained electrons, we say that chlorine has been reduced. Okay, so now referring back to the slide, which is the oxidizing agent? As mentioned earlier, the oxidizing agent is always reduced. And which is the substance reduced? That would be chlorine gas. And the reason because chlorine is reduced. Next up, which is the reducing agent. Remember, the reducing agent is the substance being oxidized. Which compound is being oxidized would be sodium. And the reason we know sodium is the reducing agent is because sodium is oxidized. As you can see, sodium has been oxidized. So that was the third parameter to define oxidation reduction reactions. Let's look at an example of a displacement reaction whereby we have magnesium reacting with aqueous copper sulfate solution to produce magnesium sulfate as well as solid copper. So what are the half equations for this displacement reaction? 
As you can see here, magnesium will become magnesium 2 plus by releasing two electrons. So electrons are reduced by two. Therefore, we know that oxidation reaction has occurred. How about for copper 2 plus? Copper 2 plus has gained two electrons to become copper. So electrons are increased by two. Therefore, reduction reaction occurs. So which is a substance that is oxidized? And in this case here, the answer is magnesium. How do we know that? Because magnesium has lost electrons. As you can see from this example, if the element or compound has lost electrons, we would say the element or compound has been oxidized. So in this case here, because magnesium has lost electrons, so we say that the substance being oxidized is magnesium. How about the substance reduced? The answer will be copper 2 plus, because copper 2 plus has gained electrons. As you can see from this slide, from this board, that any element or compound that gains electrons, we would say it has been reduced. So for that reaction, because copper 2 plus has gained electrons, therefore we say that copper 2 plus has been reduced. So, now let us look at another example in terms of gain or loss of electrons to you know, further test your understanding. This is the reaction between um, sodium and chlorine, again, to produce sodium chloride salt. Now, we know that electron arrangement of the sodium atom is 2.8.1. It achieves a stable octet electronic arrangement by releasing one electron. So you can see the equation from the slide that sodium, in order to become sodium ion, would have released one electron. So electrons are decreased by one. So from 2.8.1, sodium ion has an electronic configuration of 2.8. Therefore, we would say that oxidation reaction has occurred. How do we know? Because electrons are lost. Electrons are released. Then let's look about chlorine. We know electronic arrangement of chlorine atom is 2.8.7. For chlorine to achieve a stable octet electronic arrangement, it has to gain one electron. Surely it has to gain one electron to achieve a stable octet electron configuration. So in this case here, if you look at the equation in the slide, chlorine gains one electron to become chloride ion. From electron configuration of 2.8.7, it becomes 2.8.8. So electrons are increased by one, and therefore we would say reduction has happened because chlorine has accepted one electron. Now, let's look at the last example for today's lesson, which will be about the displacement reaction. We have the reaction between magnesium and copper sulfate to produce magnesium sulfate and copper. And what are the half equations here? I think to exemplify this, we could look at the board for this equation. So we are looking at the reaction between magnesium and copper sulfate producing magnesium sulfate as well as some solid copper. So let's look at two half equations from this full complete equation. Now what happens to magnesium? From magnesium atom to become magnesium ion, it would have to release two electrons. Okay, so this will be the half equation. One of the half equations. For magnesium to become magnesium 2 plus ion, magnesium would have to release, give away two electrons to become the ionic state. So we say that magnesium has, has lost two electrons. Magnesium has released two electrons. And 
because magnesium has lost two electrons, we would say that magnesium has been oxidized. Similar as just now, the displacement uh, it reaction shown that for any element or compound to lose electrons, we would say that it has been oxidized. Now, how about the next part? How about the second half equation for copper 2 plus? For copper 2 plus to become solid copper, it would have to gain two electrons to become copper. So in this case here, we say that copper 2 plus has gained how many electrons? Has gained two electrons. And if, like in this case, if a compound or an element or an ion has gained electrons, we say that copper 2 plus has been reduced. As simple as that. Okay, so right now, because copper 2 plus receives, gains electrons, so we know that it has been reduced. To further um, test our understanding, let us look back at the definition there. How do we know which is the oxidizing agent? What is the oxidizing agent for this particular reaction? Remember, oxidizing agents are reduced. So what has been reduced here would be Cu2 plus. Cu2 plus has been reduced. So therefore, the oxidizing agent will be Cu2 plus. What is the reducing agent, everybody? The reducing agent should be the substance that is being oxidized. And what is being oxidized? Magnesium is being oxidized. So the answer here is magnesium. The reason because magnesium has been oxidized. So let's look at the slide uh, whereby the answers will be shown as well. So let's look at the answers on the slide. For the half equation, magnesium to become magnesium 2 plus ion, electrons are released by 2. Therefore, oxidation reaction occurs. For half equation copper 2 plus to become solid copper, electrons are gained by 2. Therefore, reduction reaction occurs. The substance being oxidized, as mentioned, is magnesium because magnesium has lost electrons. While the substance reduced will be copper 2 plus, reason being copper 2 plus has gained electrons. And what is the oxidizing agent? Remember, as I mentioned, oxidizing agent would be the substance that is reduced, and the substance reduced here would be copper 2 plus. So the oxidizing agent here is copper 2 plus, reason being copper 2 plus has been reduced. Reducing agent here would be magnesium, reason being because magnesium has been oxidized. So let's have a short recap for today's lesson. Um, we were able to define oxidation and reduction in terms of oxygen loss or gain, in terms of hydrogen loss or gain. We were also able to define oxidation and reduction in terms of electron transfer, as in in terms of electron loss or electron gain. Next up, we will look at how to define oxidation and reduction in terms of increase or decrease in oxidation number. So that's the end for our lesson for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching ITTV. We look forward to see you again the next time. Thank you and have a great day.